Good morning, friends. I'm Reverend Martha Morales. I'm chair of the Order of Deacons for our CalPAC annual conference. I bring you Christmas greetings from the people of Claremont United Methodist Church. Will you join me in our prayer of invocation? Come, Christ Jesus, be our guest, and may our lives by you be blessed. Come, God with us, and free us from the false claims of the empires of this world. We are lonely for you and your peace. Come, Emmanuel, and dwell in us. Make us your people. Indeed, the people through whom you bring love and justice into the world. Come, Jesus, and reign. Claim your rightful place in our hearts and in the midst of our community. Plant the seeds of hope. Establish God's reign on earth. For we pray as you taught us that God's reign might come in fullness on earth. Now let us worship, filled with the hope of a God who comes to us. Thanks be to God. Amen. xin thánh chúng ta tiếp tục cầu nguyện Chúa những bài pray song sáng nay chúng ta cùng hòa lòng với những cái hát chúng ta cầu nguyện Chúa.
mỗi khi chúng con chúng ta sẽ được nghĩ thánh đức chúa mỗi khi chúng con suy nghĩ về tình yêu của ngài và chúng con có đủ lời của riêng của chúng con nói lên được công ơn của chúa đã ban cho chúng con có người đã nói rằng dù là chúng con có thể lấy hết những cây rừng để làm bút nước tại chỗ để làm bút Brothers and sisters of the California Pacific Annual Conference, I am Michael Mitchell, your self district lay leader. I bring to you today a word of scripture from Psalm 98, and it begins as so I'll oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory, he has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the earth with righteousness 
and the peoples with equity. Lord, bless the reading of your word. Let me reflect on this scripture briefly. During this Advent season, it brings a mixture of feelings and emotions for a lot of people. For some, the feelings are great surrounding family, friends, and the Christmas uh, Advent season as a whole. For others, the feelings and memories during this season brings about some pain. The takeaway that I wanna leave for you with this passage is that there is always hope when our Lord is involved, especially during this Advent season. Psalm 98 gives us hope because all that has been difficult has been overcome by God. God works in ways that we do see and ways that we do not see for all that is great for his kingdom. We have joy and hope in the miracle birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that was born to save, redeem, and give us life eternal. I hope and pray during this season that the miracle birth of Jesus Christ touches your life in some type of meaningful way that gives you hope, joy, and praise for the future. God bless you all. Merry Christmas. Amen. Greetings and Merry Christmas. My name is Reverend Anna Lee Mulford, the Chair of the Order of Elders and Pastor at the United Methodist Church of Thousand Oaks. Hear these words of confession. The cares of this life weigh us down and we seek escape more than insight. Avoidance rather than confrontation with God's truth. God comes to us even when we are hiding from the best we know. God waits to hear our story and to restore us to life as it's meant to be. Let us come to God in prayer. Now, join me in the prayer of compassion. God of light who shines in deepest darkness, we hear you calling us out of hopelessness into hope. But we are frightened by your call. We are afraid of taking chances. We are afraid of following your light because it leads us into the places where you need us. We don't want to see how your people hurt. We don't want to see your light shining in the eyes of our neighbor. Yet, we know that in those places, your grace shines. Help us to seek your light. Guide us in your way that we might be your children of day. Through the light of the world, we pray. Amen. And now let us take a moment for silent prayers of confession followed by our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our reading comes to us from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. And I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. 
there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you are listening to this sermon, I hope that your pastor is taking some much needed time off. This is the purpose of this sermon and worship aids, to provide your pastor the chance to catch their breath and enjoy some family during this holiday season. You know, we've learned a lot about online worship during the global pandemics. And one important lesson is that you can't go too long with an online sermon. Unlike in-person preaching, where the congregation is pretty captive, folks can turn you off literally if you're not very interesting online. Uh, even if they doze off, which can be pretty common during in-person preaching, one just has to reach over and turn off the audio video and enjoy a good nap. So I've concluded that uh, a good online sermon should last around 8 to 12 minutes maximum go any longer and it's bye-bye video and preacher. <laughs> I'm sure you won't complain if we stick to this time limit today. We, we've allowed for an open time frame for this preaching video. Some of you may see this before Christmas and some of you after during the early part of the new year. Either way, our theme of light uh, and the darkness will work. For you see, the global pandemics of COVID-19, worldwide racism, and climate destruction has cast a dark cloud over all of our lives. We live in hard times and we often lose our way because it's so dark and ominous. My youngest son, Trent, is an adult now with children of his own but I can still remember he would wake up in the middle of the night and declare, I'm afraid of the dark, Dad. I would usually reply like a typical adult, there's nothing to be afraid of, Trent. The doors are all locked. Your sisters and parents are in nearby rooms. But he would reply, I'm still afraid of the dark, Dad. Foolishly, I would stick to adult logic but there's nothing to be afraid of, Trent. There's nothing in the dark. How easy it is for us to forget children's logic. Of course there are things in the dark for children. Scary, evil, frightening things that hide in the darkness and wait to pounce on us. I'm afraid of the dark. How many of us have that same feeling? Well, maybe not of the physical darkness, but the symbol of what darkness represents, disease, destruction, desolation, and death. From the dark oil spill off our coast, the vigilante killings by a 17-year-old with an assault rifle at night, to the dark night of our souls when drive-by shootings take the life of innocent children in, our, in their own homes. We have seen our share of all these things in the past year and a half. And we're all a little afraid of what they represent. But what we need to remember is the darkness is not bad, nor is the light all good. In some Asian cultures, we have the reverse value. Dark clothes are good and white clothes are negative. As human beings, darkness is conducive to good sleep. And too much light from the sun produces skin cancers, which are very bad. As we look at the scripture passage for today, it would not be very smart of me to take on a theological prologue, prologue of the Gospel of John in a very short sermon. But still, unlike the very human nativity scenes in the Synoptic Gospels, 
John begins with a theological statement. Many scholars comment on how he draws from the creation story in Genesis for many of the images here, going back into the beginning of time to create all that is. What is the first thing that God makes? The light. John mirrors this imagery and ties Jesus to the light of the world created in the beginning. I'm struck by how John couples life with light, such that the life of Jesus was the light of all people. And then comes that famous line, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Going back to my young son, Trent, when he was afraid of the dark, what would help him was this. I would say, how about if we keep a night light on in your room, Trent? And he would reply, okay, Dad, but can you stay here a little while? Sure, Trent. That's a pretty potent combination. Light in your dad to fight off the forces of the dark. And sure enough, when that light came on, his fear would subside and he would fall asleep rather quickly. Darkness has been no stranger throughout all of history. It was a reality in Jesus' own time. Remember, Mary and Joseph are turned away from a lighted inn to take refuge in a dark stable. Jesus is born in pitch darkness. Herod has all the babies in Bethlehem killed to eliminate the one who is predicted to be king. Darkness and death were no strangers to Jesus. And yet, and yet, a silent star beams into this darkness and amid the killings, a baby survives. This is the heart of the gospel message. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Christ shines in our lives like a beacon of light. And as potent as the darkness is in our world, Christ's light cannot be extinguished. It shall not be extinguished. Now, whether you're hearing this at the close of the year or the beginning of the new year, we as Christians must bear witness to this light. We as Christians must reflect this light into a dark world. We as Christians must shine with this light to lead the way out of darkness, out of COVID and its variants, out of racism, out of our climate destruction. We must reflect the light of Christ in this hurting world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Let me close today with this old story. A successful business, businessman had no children but three nephews. He was getting old and he knew he had to appoint his successor. He called the three nephews to explain the situation and then set up a test for them. He gave them each the same amount of money and sent them off to secure that which would fill a room of the same size to the maximum amount. The nephew who filled the room the most would inherit his business. They all went off. And at the appointed time, the first nephew returned with bales of hay. And although there were a lot, it only filled the room halfway. The next nephew came and he had purchased down feathers. And when they were released in the room, it flew everywhere. But when they had settled down, only secured about two thirds of the space. The third nephew, did not return on time. 
The two other nephews said it, it was too late and one of them must be declared the winner. But the uncle said, let's give him a little bit more time. And sure enough, as the day gave way to the darkness, the third nephew arrived, but seemingly with nothing with him. He then to explain to his uncle that he had spent most of the day in a small church, praying for some insight. He gave most of the money through a collection offering to the poor. And upon leaving, he purchased a small candle and a match with a few coins he had left. He then placed the candle in the middle of the room, and when he lit it, the flight filled every corner of the dark room. The uncle knew instantly that he possessed the wisdom to be his successor. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus at the close of 2021 or the beginning of 2022, behold, the light has come. Behold, Jesus has come. Amen. Thank you.
receive this benediction and blessing in this most holy of seasons. May you follow the light of hope's guiding star. Seek the child. Listen to the words of a heavenly host. Find the child. Offer as gifts the best that you have. Serve the child. Peace be among us. Light surrounds us. God is with us. Life is before us. Amen.